Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's wrap up our look at split screening inside of Media Composer and Symphony. And here's the situation that we have the client has decided that they like this layout to do some split screens. And what they've said to us is, okay, we need to put some footage inside of these Mac keys, or what are going to become Mac keys, and we need to animate them coming onto the screen. Now, if we were doing this inside of a compositing application, this might seem pretty straightforward, but we're not. We're going to do all of it, including isolating our mats inside of Media Composer or Symphony. You know what? With a little bit of forward thinking, this is just as easy to do inside of Media Composer and Symphony as it is inside of a compositing application. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony. Obviously, a Command and Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in our template. So what we're going to do is just head to the desktop. Now, this element does come from Rampant Design Tools. It's one of their new style mat templates, and it's just a still frame of something that animates on. But like I said, we're just using the hypothetical situation where this is something that was decided upon by the client. The client's given this to us and said, okay, we need to put footage in this and animate it. Okay, so let's import this. So I'm going to select the, the PNG file. What I'm going to do is come to Options. We're going to resize the image to fit the format raster. It is computer RGB. There is no alpha, so we're simply going to say ignore, and I'm going to say OK, and let's import this in. So you'll see in a second it is brought into our timeline. Very nice. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to isolate these into three separate elements. Now, for me, the easiest way to go about doing this is we're just going to take just a segment of it here about right there. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop that into my timeline. And what we're going to do is we're just going to export three still frames out of Symphony. So what I'm going to do is hit Control and 8. We're going to come down to Blend. We're going to take 3D Warp. And let's just isolate the upper left. This is going to be number one. This is going to be number two. This is going to be number three. So what we're going to do again, step into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is the shortcut as always. If you don't have it mapped, Effects Mode right there. Or Effects Mode right over here at the top of your timeline. Now with the Effects Editor open, what we're going to do is simply select Crop. And let's just crop out the area that we're going to want first. Like I said, it's going to be... Segment number one right here. Very nice. And what we're going to do is just step out of effects mode. I'm going to right click. We're going to say export. I'm just going to simply call this number one. We're going to save it right to the desktop. Now what I encourage you to do is to actually create a folder inside of your project called graphics. And how you can actually do that, and I'll just show you here. This is somewhat of how I work when I'm at my daily job as one of the senior editors at Myjo. What I'm going to do is just come into Avid Projects. We're going to come down to this is Learn Media Composer right here. I'm just going to create a new folder called, appropriately enough, Graphics. And inside here, we'll just simply call this number one. And I know that this is going to be an HD still export. Let's just come into Options for a second. We'll just make them JPEGs just to make our life easier. And we know that this is 1280 by 720. There we go. RGB. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we'll just call this Save As. We'll call it 720p JPEG. Say OK. Oh, look at that. I already have a template for this. We'll just overwrite it. That's fine. We'll say Save. Call it number one. Again, step back into Effects Mode. Just going to isolate number two. Just like such. There we go. Again, Export number two. There we go. And of course, last but certainly not least, let's just isolate number three. Now, of course, if you had Photoshop, you could do all this in Photoshop. But you know what? We're just going to assume hypothetically the only thing that you have is your brain and your trusty NLE here. There we go. Export. We're going to call this, appropriately enough, number three. Say save. And now what I can do is actually delete both of these elements. And what we're going to do is we're just going to import our elements. Of course, we're going to come back to the Y drive. We're going to come to Avid Projects. We're going to come down to Learn Media Composer into Graphics. There are our three elements here. Now I'm going to need to come into Options and make sure that Image Size for Current Format is selected because we know that we exported this as 720p. Simply say OK, say Open, and there is the three elements. Very cool. OK, so let's choose some footage to work with here. What we're going to do is we're going to come to Other Bins, and yeah, you know what, let's stick with our motocross footage. I like this footage. And what we're going to do, just pick a shot here at random, 
And I think that kind of works. Maybe we'll just take, you know, about that much of it right there. So I'm going to mark that range of the clip. We're going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And we'll just stick it into, actually, what I should do here is open my sequences Bing because we want to keep things as organized as possible. Again, B on the keyboard to edit that into my timeline. We'll select the sequences bin. I'll say OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a mat key. Now, like I said, this is going to be for segment number one, which is going to go in the upper left-hand corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Y uh, on our sequence here just to add a new video layer. I'm going to come over here to my element. We're going to mark an endpoint. We're just going to drop it in right over top of the clip below. Now what we're going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to come down to the Keen section, and we're going to simply select Matte Key. I'm going to take the Matte Key, and we're going to drag it and drop it down, and drop it right on top of that shot, and you'll see right away, we almost got what we want. It's just that things are actually kind of reversed here. Well, how do we get in and fix that? Well, you'll remember from a previous lesson, it's actually very easy to do. What I'm going to do is step into effects mode. And once I'm in effects mode, all I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over here to the mat key uh, inside the effects editor to the foreground section. And all we're going to do is simply say invert key and take a look at that. We now have almost what we want. We're almost there, but not quite. So what I'm going to do again is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're going to come back up to the blend section. I'm going to take 3D Warp, and we're going to drop it onto the clip just like such. Now you'll see there's the clip there, but what we want to do is we want to put it into this window up here. So all I'm going to do is with uh, the effects editor selected, obviously Shift and Y to do that, uh, or the effects mode right here, or right here, is we're going to take this element, we're going to shrink it down like such. Okay? And we're just going to reposition it roughly about here. We need to make sure it fills the whole frame. There we go. Now let's just see what it does over the length of time. That's okay. He sort of starts in the image and then disappears. Obviously we would adjust this for however we want. And you know what I think I'm going to do here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this shot start a bit earlier here. There we go. And remember, if we want to adjust this clip, very easy. Simply double click. Now we can see the clip inside of that effect. We're just going to patch into that layer and we're going to swap the shot out like such. There we go. Because remember, we're going to animate this element on, so what we want to do is want to make sure that he's going to appear right about there. Perfect. Okay, so let's do the next element. We're going to hit Control and Y again. And again, what we're going to do is just pick a shot at random here. Um, let's find one where there's actually a guy sort of in the shot. Or it could be a guy, could be a girl. There we go. This is a good one here. I like this one. So let's take this again. We're just simply going to select the entire duration, hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, Control and Y to create a new layer, Command and Y for my Mac friends. We're going to take the next Mac key. We're going to hit T on the keyboard to select it again, right to the layer above, edit that in. Now all I have to do is I don't have to go back to the effects, uh, I don't need to go back to the effects list to take the Mac key and drag it and drop it. Remember, because I've already sort of customized this with that invert key parameter, I can simply take it and drag it and drop it right over like such, and there we go. Now again, all I need to do is take my 3D warp. We're going to drag it and drop it. It's obviously going to position. We actually dragged it onto the wrong layer here, just like such. We just need to grab it and reposition it. Now obviously we want to do that. over top of the keyframe, because if we don't, you'll see it adds a second keyframe, but that's okay, we'll just delete that. So now what we have is we've got two elements. So we only need one more. So let's find another one here. Let's see, ah, that's not too bad just like that. It's kind of a long shot. Again, what we're going to do in this case is just create two new video layers. Now we know that our video clip goes on the lower layer, just like such. We know that our mat is going to go on the layer above it just like such. And again, the exact same technique we just did. We're going to select that mat key. We're going to come over. We're going to drag and drop it onto, appropriately enough, the mat key. And you'll see that what happens is that it really only impacts the layer directly below it. Now, you're really going to see where this is going to come, going to come into play in just a second. So now, in this case, I could take the 3D warp and drag it. But because it's a little bit more sort of you know, customized, it's taller than everything else, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go back to 3D warp here. And we're just going to do this the old-fashioned way, which is okay. So we're going to take this. We're going to reposition it. There we go. It's looking pretty nice. Just want to make sure that he's going to be in the frame for most of the shot. There we go. Looking very good. Now I think we're just going to repo it a little bit here. Just remember to obviously delete that keyframe. 
And what we now have is our three elements looking very nice, but client wants them to animate in. So what do we do? Well, guess what? I could get in and I could animate these mats, but then these elements aren't going to move. Or are they? Watch what happens. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to use the first mat key right here, the very top layer, which we obviously know is the long rectangular segment, or segment three as we called it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode. And all I'm going to do just to show this to you is I'm going to come down to the horizontal position, and I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to drag it over, and take a look what happens. As I drag the mat over, it automatically takes the footage below it and drags it with it. So I don't actually need to get in and attempt to match animations. I don't need to get in and attempt to parent one layer to another layer. Media Composer in Symphony does everything for me. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to add a keyframe here. Let's actually just extend out our window here. I'm just going to add a keyframe here for the horizontal position. And I think what we'll do is actually not the horizontal position. I think we'll do it for the vertical position. I'll just say add keyframe. And what we'll do is go plus 24 for one second. Let's actually make sure that we're over here and go plus 24. There we go. We're going to add another keyframe here, just like such. Add keyframe. Come back to that first keyframe. And let's just position this outside of the frame, like such. Very nice. Okay. Now, again, we're just going to select. This is number two right here, right in the middle. Again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Now, in this case, we're going to go on the horizontal. So I'm going to right click, add a keyframe, plus 24. Let's actually make sure we're over here, plus 24. And again, exactly the same thing, add keyframe. Come back here. And all we're going to do is grab it and drag it off the frame this way. Very cool. Now, again, let's do that with the top layer here. Except the top layer, I think what we're going to do is have it come in from the top. Why not? So let's do that. What we're going to do again, just make sure we're in effects mode. We're going to be adjusting the vertical position here. So again, we're going to come in here, right click, add keyframe. We're going to go plus 24. Again, exactly the same thing. You see a lot of repetitive stuff going on here, but you see nothing wrong with being repetitive. It's kind of like muscle memory. Being so repetitive will give you the muscle memory that once you see something you need to do like this, you'll pretty much do it automatically. It's not going to be something that you have to think about. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do what we had done before with our uh, adjusting everything 24 frames. So I'm simply going to say plus 24. And what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the middle layer, layer 2, element 2, drag it down. We're going to go plus 24. Again, exactly the same thing. Now, obviously, I can make sure I adjusted the ending so that, you know, I could extend everything down. In this case, I'm just going to hack everything off just for the purpose of what we're doing. And take a look at what we have now. We have one element, two element, and we should actually make sure that in this case, I actually need to render this topmost layer. So what I'm going to do here is just come back, I'll just render this out, say go, you'll see it's going to render pretty darn quick. Now again, remember, we are working in HD. Just rendered out that mat key and the 3D warp. There we go. I'm going to come back to the beginning here. Let's hit play. Segment 1, segment 2, segment 3. And look at that. I only had to render, or I only had to animate each one of those mats, and everything trickled down for each one of these layers to bring the appropriate footage along for the ride. Now, this is only a really basic look at mat keying. We're going to get more into mat keying and more complex compositing in later tutorials, but I wanted to show this to you because this is a very important technique, and it's also a huge time saver and work saver because, you know, you don't need to get in and overdo this stuff, especially when you're using the power of mat keys in your media composer and symphony timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.